it's your project. You can do with it uh, what you wish, which is the, the, the tremendous freedom that we have doing what we do. Good morning, folks. I hope you've got a beverage with you or a comfy chair or some combination. We're going to talk a little differently than, than we normally do. This is going to be a section about what I do to recreate a label. And I'm going to be using Photoshop. I've got CS4 just because if I had CS6 or who knows whatever version it's on now that means that I've got less money for parts and tools and we all know how much I love parts and tools um, so we're going to talk specifically about the project that was formerly known as the the Prairie 12 string this is the shape of the guitar when I received it in a computer box it was found in a uh, in a wood pile it had water in it. My buddy called me up and said, Dude, I found it. Do you want it? I'll put it in a box and ship it to you. And he did. No indication as to a manufacturer on the outside. On the inside, because of where it was found, in the condition that it was found, this is the label as it came to me. Not a lot to go on. It says serial, and then it says hashtag. If you're an old-timer like me, uh, it's not a hashtag. Um, that's a pound sign. Anyways, this is the label as it came to me, and there's not a lot of information to work with. So I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked. And the interwebs is an amazing place if you have enough information to go on, which in this case I didn't at the time. So what I started looking for was this. I started looking for this decal because this is a water slide decal. It's not an actual inlay. And I found something that was pretty darn close. And it was on a 12 string made in Japan by a company called Prairie. And in the absence of any other uh, compelling information, that's what this guitar became. It became the Prairie 12 string. And so. I've now that was a year ago. Now I've gotten to the point where I need to think about recreating this label. And I have this piece which came from this location. That is what survived. Uh, most of this flaked off and just kind of disappeared into the ethos. And so I had this one fragment that I held on to in order to give me something to work with so it's a roughly a three inch by three inch area and so yesterday I started looking on the interwebs again um, the great thing about the interwebs is you can pack a lot of information onto it in a year so I'm searching for prairie 12 string guitars I'm not finding anything that is is being of any help so I I decide to widen um, my yugugalizing. So then I start looking for Japan 12 string guitar. And uh, as I'm looking and looking and looking, I come across this image. And uh, that was an eye opener because this is not a prairie guitar, this is a Bruno Ventura. Um, same pattern, same colors. Now we're talking. Um, this isn't two things that look close. This is this is this is what it is. So as you can see, it all matches up here. It even says serial number right down in here. The other thing that got me excited is look at this rosette. I've got a singular black band. I've got a wood space. Black white black white black white black white and a big thick white one in the middle because if you look at my rosette it's the same this is the same rosette with the same label pattern this is a 12 string this is a 12 string I've I've found my guitar um, 
So now I'm searching even more because, and I'm finding more information because now this is a Bruno Ventura and I know now I'm, I'm suddenly finding a lot more information. Apparently a model 1590, although I will say I've seen a 1590 with a fixed bridge and I've seen a 1590 with a floating bridge um, like the one that I have. But the important part about this one is that I have 98% of this label. Um, and even though it is um, a skewed picture, it's enough that I can work with it. I can use this now to recreate and customize a label um, for the guitar that we've come to know as the Lazarus. Because if this thing ever plays, it will surely have been raised from the dead. So with that kind of background in mind, let me reset the screen and then we will, I'll show you the steps that I use to get the label um, that we're going to use. All right, we've, uh, we've reloaded the screen here. First thing I want to do is this is going to be my, this is going to be my working area here and I want my image I want this label to end up about three inches square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a couple of guides over and uh, give me an area that is three inches square. Um, I need to tell you I am not a Photoshop guru by any means. This is just another tool that I use to get stuff done. Um, I'm sure uh, I'll probably get all kinds of, of kind and loving comments. Hopefully that's the way they'll come across. Telling us different ways that we can do this and we can do this easier because that would be fantastic because I'm always looking for an easier way to do stuff. So if you would like to kindly and lovingly tell me a different and better way that I could do this, so that the people looking at this video will not have as difficult a time. That would be fantastic. If you're going to be an asshat, don't bother. Um, so this is my this is going to be my area that I'm going to work in here. Now the first thing that I've got to do over here is I've got to extract this um, information here, and I'm going to use this funky uh, polygonal lasso tool over here, which may or may not be the correct term. Um, and I've got old man eyes, so I have to make stuff like really big um, for it to make any sense to me. Um, and the way that I'm moving quickly across the screen, I'm going to click that. When you see that little hand pop up, that's just because I'm pressing the space bar. And that allows me to move my image around in such a manner. Alright, there we go. I'm going to control C, that is copy. I'm now going to control V and that's going to paste. So now I've got um, this uh, extracted information uh, onto my blank canvas. Um, my blank canvas is 1800 pixels by 1800 pixels at 300 dpi. Um, that gives me a, a decent sized image to be able to print from. Um, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use my funky little um, uh, wizard magic wand tool over here. I'm just going to click all the stuff, the white stuff, and then I'm going to hit Control shift i for inverse, and I've now selected everything that's not white. I'm also going to hit Control t for transform, and now I'm going to be able to rotate this around. And what I want to do is I want to attempt to get this edge as even as I can. And again, I know that there's some way that I can do this in a much more precise and much easier way, 
I don't know that way right now. Uh, so that's pretty darn close. Double click on that. And so now we've got this. Now what we need to do is I need to try to fit this label as it is into this area, into this square, three inch square area. Um, so I'm going to hit uh, Control T again for transform. I'm now going to right click on this and I'm going to hit, uh, make sure I click distort. And what I'm now going to do is I want to fit the four corners that I have into the square four corners of my work area uh, because the camera was not at a uh, not at a 90 degree angle straight above this label he shot it skewed so the perspective is a little off so now um, I'm just going to drag I'm handling it by this corner but I'm trying to place the corners of the pixels in that corner that looks pretty close. Same thing here. Trying to get the pixel, the corner of that label, as close to that as I can. That looks pretty close. Now if I zoom out from there, you can see that we're, we've reduced this corner because everything was kind of angled like this. Now this is where it gets fun. We're going to go over here. And again, I've got to handle it by the corner here. We'll pull that down into that corner, which now gives us that. And now we got one more. Boy, that scared the poop out of you because it sure did me. Now I've got this lined up with this line, this lined up with this line, what does that look like? Hey, that's not too bad. Alright, so there we are. We have now got our skewed label shifted around using the, uh, um, again, that was control T and then right click and that's using the distort feature on free transform. You know what? Now let's look down here because that can come down a little bit more. Distort. There we go. Yeah, I think that's better. All right, so now that we've got this done, now comes the kind of fun part. And I'm gonna go get another cup of coffee, and you should too. All right, we're uh, back. I've had my 117th cup of coffee. Working on 118th. And I have a frog outside my window. So this may sound a little bit choppy, because my frog gigging skills are not anywhere near what they used to be when I was a boy growing up in the south. All right, we are uh, working with this label here that we've extracted from a photograph of someone else's Bruno Ventura. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to select out and separate uh, these two colors so that we can then have a, a much better template um, to do what we want to do uh, with these colors. And we're going to do that using what's called an alpha channel. Um, now the first thing that uh, we're going to do is we're going to duplicate what we're working on. Um, two reasons for that. Uh, probably the most important is I don't want to screw up my one file of this. Um, so now that we've made our duplicate or we've made our copy, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we're going to use the select color range tool. And you will see that this brings up um, 
uh, this dialog box we're going to use this eyedropper here on the left hand side and what I'm going to do is start selecting out these border colors this brown now it's not as simple as just picking brown because there are many different shades of brown because of the fading because of the uh, glare over on this side of the label because of the mildew and the water damage uh, down around in this area it's not just one color of brown so what we're going to do is we're going to use this fuzziness slider here to help us pick um, not just brown but areas of brown now that I've got a base I'm going to use this um, this addition eyedropper here and I'm going to start picking these other shades and then adjusting my fuzziness kind of back and forth because I want to I want to make it a very contrasty black and white image here because that is going to kind of simplify the mask that I end up using um, and this is you know just another great tool that you can use um, as much as you really need to to get what it is that you need um, We'll select a little more of this in here. I know this one's pretty ginky looking. All right, that looks not too bad. I'm not worried about this right here because we're not going to use that. Um, uh, we're just there's other places that we're going to go, and that's not going to be necessary information for us. So we'll click OK. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the second icon from the left down here save selection as a channel because now what that's going to do that's going to give us something called an alpha channel um, I'm going to select that channel and now don't panic it's okay um, <clears throat> everything here is in black and white because you're working basically with a mask some things are selected and some things are not selected um, right now you can see the marching ants they are around the area that is selected um, and we're gonna tweak that because if you will look it's really kinda dirty over here um, and on the inside here we're gonna we're gonna refine this um, a little bit so I'm going to image adjust and I'm gonna click on my levels slider um, actually you know what let's deselect and now we'll do that image adjustment levels there now you can see these this is the black area right here this is the white area right here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna compress and squeeze that we're gonna make our blacks blacker we're gonna make our whites whiter as you can see the mask kind of clearing up now you'll notice this is all cleaned up over here um, this has started to clean up this has kind of melted away this line here and some of this has melted away and again that's okay we're gonna hit the okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean our mask up uh, I'm gonna hit B for brush uh, I'm going to use my open and close brackets to make my brush bigger and smaller. Right now I've just got white selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to take out any black areas that are still kind of selected in my, in my white mask. Um, if you have a tablet pen, this is much easier to do. Um, I'm just too lazy to get mine out because that would mean I'd have to clean my desk off and I got too much crap on my desk to do that um, I'm not gonna be super duper precise on this because one I can I can kinda clean it up a little bit later um, the other thing is that this is um, this is gonna make a three inch square label right now it's about Oh, I don't know it's about six or seven inches across on my screen so it actually I'm looking at a lot more detail than is actually going to print out 
Um, all right, that looks good. So now I'm just going to, well, let's see, do we have anything down here? you got a spot here and there. Um, and if you can get those picked out, that's great. Um, because, again, it'll just make your mask cleaner, and it'll make the cleanup that you've got to do um, when you go in and paint this uh, a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to switch my colors. Uh, now I'm painting black. So now I'm going to get rid of the little white areas that have been selected in my um, in the black portion of the mask. Again, I'm not super duper concerned with getting my lines super duper straight. Um, for the reason that it's just it's going to be a small label on the inside of the guitar um, and I really don't want people to pay a whole lot of attention to it I want them to look at what we've done on the guitar um, alright so I've cleaned up my mask um, uh, now I'm just going to control and click on that alpha channel and now look how it has the marching ants have selected all of these lovely white areas. Now, what I can do is I can bring my original file back up and if we're going to paint, let's pick a color. If we pick this color, this is the brown that I get right here. And I'm trying to find a darker, kind of newer-ish looking brown. Um, that one's okay. Yeah, we'll try that. I'm going to click OK. I got my brush on. I'm going to get a nice big paintbrush now. Duh. Okay, look, I'm still on my alpha channel, so I'm going to hit Control Z, which is going to undo. And then I'm going to click on red, green, blue. Now, there we go. Is that an okay brown? Yeah, that's not too bad. Alright, paint that in. Paint your letters in. There we go. Now, we want to get the yellow. Control, Shift, Inverse. Now you'll see the marching ants were on the outside have disappeared. Now I have this golden rod kind of area selected. I can change the color. I don't even have to go back to the other image if I don't want to. And now I just kind of try to have to find that goldish color that I want. And we'll try that. Same type of thing. Use your big brush. We'll go bigger brush. It'll go quicker. And now we can paint over all of this. Control D to deselect everything. Well, there we go. Um, not a bad place uh, to start. We'll um, add some features to it here in just a minute. Because believe it or not, I'm out of coffee. So uh, what we're going to do in this last section is uh, we're going to move uh, this text right here. We're going to move this. We're going to shift this up, and then we're going to put some additional information uh, down here at the bottom. We're going to do that in the next part. All right, we are uh, back. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different options um, for going this route. If you want to leave it there, and you can just print it out and leave it there, you know, you can certainly do that. Um, if you want to relocate this as it is, um, I would um, use the M um, selection tool. Then I'm going to press a V. And that's going to allow me to move it. And then I can just arrow up or arrow down as I need to. Uh, the advantage of using the arrow up versus the mouse um, is that uh, 
it's going to keep it centered. Control D for deselect. I can go back to my brush. I'm still in my same color that I was previously. If you wanted to, you could just select this with the magic wand um, and be done with it. Or you could just do it like that. Now I've moved that uh, I've moved that block of text up. It stays original um, uh, to the label because it is that font or those two fonts because they use two different ones uh, in this. Um, actually, it looks like they use three if you're going to go with the line down there uh, at the bottom. Um, and then you could select your um, uh, the text that you wanted to put in there, put it on a layer, do whatever you want to do with it. Um, that's one of the options uh, that you have. Uh, the other option that you have um, is that you can just kind of start from scratch, uh, which is what uh, I've decided to do in this case. Um, and I've got a nifty little action over here that will first of all find my center point um, so that when I click on my text tool I can click it and now the text that I'm going to type is going to be centered. This is a um, a Bruno Venture. Um, let's select our color. Um, Oh, here, let's do this. Let's just hit the enter for that. Um, what do I want? I want that color. Okay, now we're the same color um, as our as our border. Um, and now I can select another text um, another text line. We'll make this one a little bit smaller. And again, now we're the same. Uh, we're the same font. We're the same color. Um, it's a similar style. This font was was difficult to locate, and here's the reason: most of the Western fonts that you that I was able to find, um, there would be a a dip right here in the middle, kind of similar to there is here on this end. Um, so. And it's just that's just my choice, and that's your choice. Uh, you know, you can certainly do uh, with it um, what you wish, because that's the kind of cool part about uh, doing the things that we're doing. Is you can basically say, uh, "I'm gonna do what I want." Um, this was made in Japan. Not sure why we selected the white color on that, but it did. So, next line, resurrected in California, and then my name, because I like my name, there we go, and that's a little tight for me there, so... We'll select that. We'll pull that down. Uh, probably go 10. There we go. We'll select this one. Let's see. Let's move all this down just a little bit. You know what we're going to do? Is let's put a line here. We'll put a space there. Now we'll move back up. Let's select this layer and we'll move this up some more. Isn't this fun? Yeah. Uh, now I know 
there are some awesome, amazing people with mad Photoshop skills that are looking at me and going, dude, what are you doing? Um, well, part of the answer to that is, I don't really know. Um, oh, you know what we need to do? Let's put the model number on here, just because we, now we know what it is. Should we go up here? Yeah. Model number 1590. There we go. Alright. Um, F4, uh, at least on my keyboard, I've got that as a hotkey. Uh, F4 flattens everything. Um, control and semicolon will make your guidelines disappear. And uh, uh, there is the label. Now we will uh, we'll print this out. Um, probably print it out a couple of different uh, uh, on the same sheet of paper. I can print, you know, two, four, six of them on a, on a sheet of paper because then we're going to um, we're going to shellac the top of that um, in order to give it a little bit more of a of an authentic old uh, feel to it, and also to help uh, protect it. Um, uh, from any moisture damage because as we know on this project moisture damage can happen um, so that's just kind of you know the way that that I did it uh, you're uh, certainly you know welcome to do whatever you wish um, but experiment you know figure stuff out look for different fonts um, you know if you want to if you want to get really crazy clean all these edges up um, it's your project. You can do with it uh, what you wish, which is the, the, the tremendous freedom that we have doing what we do. Um, so thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, actually, you know what? I'll print these out, and uh, we'll tag it on the end of this one, the, uh, the process and us actually installing this label. All right, cheers. All right, there's no telling how this is going to go. But... There it is. I'm trying to keep the glare down. There we go. Installed. And just <laughs> waiting for me to finish rebuilding table saws and radial arm saws so I can build neck alignment jigs so that I could get the freaking neck on and be done with this. But that's where she be. Cheers. Hey, if you've enjoyed this episode of Rattle Can Guitar Restorations, you might want to check out the videos below. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to us over on the YouTube. You can friend us over on the Facebook. And you can follow us on the Instagram as well as the Twitter. See you next time. Thanks for watching the train wreck. Cheers.